All right, so it's been a while since I've given an update on this project and I figured I would go ahead and show you what little bit of progress has been made on it. And it's mostly just in the user interface aspect of this. So as I've discussed before, what I'm trying to do right now is turn this into something that would replace like an IMAX B6 charger or something along those lines. Now the way that I had this set up before, it was essentially just a BMS with a screen on it. So it just kind of did whatever it could to balance the batteries out and also keep them from being overcharged. Now we still have the same functionality, but we're getting a little bit more control of it. So this is the default screen that you get when you power this up. And you'll see it's just the individual cell voltage and the amount of current going into the pack. And if you hit this far right button, which I think I'm gonna end up calling the OK key, you'll see this here in a second, but if I hit that, it switches into just showing the entire pack voltage and the amperage going into it. And if you hit it again, it switches back. So that's nothing too special, but now I have also added in, if you press this far left button, you'll get another screen. Let's say press OK to start charging. And I'm calling this far right key here the OK button for now anyway. And if you hit that, it will enable charging. And you'll see we're now, we're now putting about an amp into the battery pack. So as you've probably seen in the past, this thing is powered through the balance lead of the lithium ion battery. And if we go ahead and plug it in, I'll show you what it does. For a normal startup, you get the initializing screen. We're currently on version 0.9 of the code. I am pretty close to getting this up to version one of the code, which will be a fully functioning charger, more or less. So anyway, this is what it defaults to, like I said, cell voltages and current, but the power supply is on right now, but this is not allowing power to go into the battery pack, and it will not allow power to go into the battery pack until you hit that button and then start charging with it. And now we have current going into the battery pack, as you can see there and over here probably. I've also made it so that you can stop charging the pack. So when I press this button again, it'll turn this MOSFET back off and the current will drop back to zero. So you'll see that there, zero amps. And you can go back in at this point if you wanted to and you can restart the charging. So anyway, that's the work that's been done to this so far. There are still quite a few more things that I want to do to this. Now, one of the biggest features that I would like to implement into this is being able to control the amperage that you charge the battery pack at with these buttons. The way I'm going to attempt to do this is to control this power supply with the Arduino on here. So we'll see how that ends up working out, but that's what I'm gonna try to do anyway. Now I do want to also be able to change the balance voltage. So the voltage at which this starts to balance right now, it's set at 4.2, which is pretty standard for a lithium battery pack. And I also want to be able to adjust the voltage cutoff point where this shuts off because the voltage in the cells is too high. Right now it's set at 4.25, which is where most uh, lithium ion battery protection chips seem to cut out at. So that's where it is now. But if somebody wanted to run that at a lower voltage, because there's a lot of people that use these battery packs and instead of charging all the way up to 4.2, they might only charge them up to 4.1 because that will extend the life of the battery pack. And there is also lithium ion high voltage batteries that go all the way up to 4.35, I think it is, when they're fully charged. So. I do want to be able to adjust things for that. And another big thing that I want to add into this will be a discharge mode. Actually, probably two discharge modes. One discharge mode will be for getting these cells down into a sort of storage state. As you're likely already aware, when you store lithium ion battery cells, you're supposed to keep them around 50% charge or around 3.7 to 3.8 volts per cell. So I wanna have a mode that will automatically take the cells down to about 3.8 volts. I also do wanna have another discharge mode that will allow you to take them all the way down to three volts. And that's a feature that could be used if you wanted to cycle a battery for whatever reason, or if you wanted to, you could do what's called bottom balancing in that situation. And that would be good if you had a battery pack that somehow got way out of balance and you couldn't get it to get back into balance with normal balance charging. Though that shouldn't really ever happen, it's something that could be useful. All right, so now we'll go ahead and take a look at the code because I have made quite a few significant changes to it. And this is going to go up on GitHub as well, of course, and that's going to go, or the link for that's gonna go in the description of this video.
All right, so having a look at the code here, most of what I've done to this is more or less just a facelift to make it look a little bit better, make it a bit easier to work with. But uh, anyhow, starting with the top, all of these uh, variables are all the same, except for these three have been added in. And I'll kind of explain what these do as we go along here. Void setup is the same, except for the fact that I've changed this to version 0.9, of course. And the void loop is where things change quite a bit. Now we're down to uh, this entire thing being the void loop instead of what I had before, which was quite a few lines of code just all in the void loop. But most of everything that was done before has just been replaced with this little operate line. And this whole part is for enabling and disabling charging. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and explain some other stuff before I try to explain what this does, but uh, we'll come back to this here in a second. So first off, this operate thing, if we scroll down here, we have void operate, and we have a switch case statement for two different modes. So that's what one of the variables was that was up on the uh, top of the code. So anyway, mode zero is what you're in when it first boots up. So all mode zero does is it takes the measurements it writes them to the serial and it writes them to the LCD and it makes sure that the input power is turned off and the cell balance circuits are also turned off. Mode one is what it used to do before I started messing with this code, which is just acting as a BMS. So it takes measurements, writes them to the serial, writes them to the LCD, checks the cell voltages and tries to balance them out. And it also does a safety check. And that safety check, as I think I've mentioned before, it just makes sure that the cell voltages don't go over 4.25 or, well, in this case, I have it set to 4.25. It can be set anywhere you want it, but it does that. And it also makes sure that you don't have too much current going into the pack. The trip current is something that can be set as well. But anyway, the reason why this is in a little uh, if statement here is because I have the safety check line also running somewhere else in the code. And I just don't want it to get called twice. And I'll probably try to make this so I don't have to use this if statement in the future. I have to get a little bit clever on where I place this in my code. So in order to get the code to run in the order that I wanted it to run in, I had to put the safety check in a different spot as well. And basically what this will do is if that safety check has already been tripped once, it won't run it again because of course if it trips at once it's just going to trip out again and that's just going to kind of mess with everything so there's no point in doing that uh, anyway void read switch was here before that hasn't changed uh, void serial dump is pretty much the same as it was before so essentially most of what i've done with this code is simply cut and pasting the old code that was in the void loop and breaking them apart into separate sections. So like this was all in the void loop before, now it's a separate little thing that can be called. Uh, void LCD, right? That's the same as it was before as well in the old code, but again, it's something that can be called separately. Void balance check is almost the same as it was before. The only real difference is I had to put the safety check in here, as I mentioned before, because I wanted things to run in a certain order and I couldn't get that to happen without putting the safety check in here. And I have made the safety check thing a little bit better than it used to be. Before it would only wait like three seconds or so with the power shut off and then it'd turn it back on and then it'd measure everything again. And that wasn't real great because I think given enough time, it probably still could have overcharged the cells or caused damage somehow. And even the way it is now, it might still overcharge the cells and cause damage. And I'll kind of talk about that here in a second. But anyway, I'll go ahead and jump down to the safety check part. This is pretty similar to what it was before. Uh, so this is if any of the cell voltages go above a safe voltage, in this case set at 4.25, it will shut off the incoming power. It will write error cell voltage high on the LCD, and then it'll wait for about 30 seconds or so. Now we set the safety trip value to one, and as I said, that's so we don't redo the safety check function because that'd be kind of pointless. And then in the else statement, we write the power in to high, so it turns the incoming power on. And then it's essentially the same thing with the amp cutoff thing, except for it says error over current. Now there is maybe a slight glitch you could argue in this, and that is if you have this one trip, this will actually reset it down here, but that still doesn't really matter because it still has to wait for 30 seconds in this for loop before it ever resets it. And of course it resets itself 
on the next time around the code anyway, so it doesn't really make that much of a difference that this is down here. This may not be the best way to do this, but it does work for now anyway. As you should already know, this project is still in a rough prototype stage, and of course the code is no exception to that, so this is here, it's working for now. And one thing that I might change about this in the future, at least for the charger aspect of this, will be to probably not automatically reset. Um, as I said, basically you get a 30 second delay and then it resets itself. I might eventually make it so that if this void safety check thing fails, it'll just shut off and stay off. For the actual final goal with the BMS, I will probably make it so that it does automatically reset, but I also make it I might make it a little bit harder to get it to reset. So these are things to mess with in the future. I'm not too worried about it right now. And the last thing that I have to show in this uh, sort of facelifted version of our code is the void take measurements thing. And this is almost the same as it was before. I've made one little modification and that's right here. And this essentially states if the average amperage is between negative 0.1 and positive 0.1, then we'll just say that it's zero. And the reason why I do that is because every time I've used one of those ACS 712 sensors, I cannot seem to get it to stay right at zero amps. It usually floats around like 0.05 or something like that with no current flowing through it. So this just makes sure if we're measuring no current or very little current, we just uh, ignore the fact that there's any value there. So anyway, that's all that does. And coming back up to the void loop where most of our changes have happened. All right, so now we'll go ahead and take a look at this statement here, because that's kind of what's changed, or the biggest thing that's changed anyway. So the first thing in this is if mode does not equal one, so in this case, mode can really only be one or zero the way that it's set up now. And if mode does equal one, that means that we're already charging it, so there's no point in re-enabling the charging cell. If the mode does equal one, it'll come down to this other else statement, and this is the statement that turns it back off. So then if your button state equals four, which is that leftmost button, it will uh, set the mode back to zero, thus disabling charging, and it resets the button state back to zero. And there's a delay on all of these things wherever you press a button. And of course you have to have a delay on these uh, sort of button things so you don't end up with contact balance and even just holding the button for a little bit too long, that delay just makes it a lot more stable. So if your mode, doesn't equal one, so you're not charging, and if the button state equals four, so that button's been pressed, then we turn everything off just in case something could happen. We wouldn't want to get one of these balance circuits to get stuck on or something something dumb like that. So we're gonna do while weight equals one, we clear the LCD, and then we say press okay to start charging on the LCD. Put a 100 millisecond delay in here before we start trying to read the buttons again. Then we read the buttons for three seconds and if the button does not get pressed, then we essentially just stay in this loop until the button does get pressed. Then if a button does get pressed, what happens is our button state all of a sudden does not equal zero. So we set I to 5,000. This is the same thing that I had before in other parts of the code. This is where this makes it act like an interrupt. But anyway, at that point, we set weight equal to zero. And when we set weight equal to zero, we get out of this while loop. And then we check to see if that OK button was pressed. So that's the far right button, which is button state equals one. And then we change the mode so it equals one, which will enable charging, set the button states back to zero. We have a delay of 100 in there. And also I have the button state set to zero just in case uh, the button state does not equal one. So if, say if you, press, if you press any of the other buttons but the OK button, it will cancel it the way that this is set up. So it'll just kind of ignore this thing and go back to what it was doing. So anyway, that sums up the modifications that I've done to the code. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed that little update. If you did, click the like button down below. If you like this project, consider clicking on the subscribe button below because I will be releasing more videos about this as I continue to work on it. If you like, you can follow me on Twitter. That link is in the description. And also consider checking out the other videos in this series that kind of explains how we've gotten to this point with our lithium-ion BMS. So anyway, that's about it for now, guys. Bye.